Yeah, now that we talked about convolutional networks and the convolution operation and so forth, we might wonder what is actually going on in a convolutional network. What is the convolutional neural network actually learning there? So, yeah, we can take a brief look at that from a traditional computer vision perspective. So before convolutional networks were invented, people were designing so-called yeah, edge detectors, among others. So people were designing filters by hand, by thinking about them, like applying, let's say, logical thinking. There were like Sobel filters, like vertical edge and horizontal edge detectors and so forth. And how these work is essentially that someone would define a filter thinking about what it is doing and then you can extract certain features from an image using that filter. So here's an example of what I mean. So here that's an example of a vertical edge detector and I'm impl uh, implementing it using an existing convolutional neural network filter here. Um, or layer. So here you don't have to really worry about the code implementation. I'm just using the code implementation to create these figures and also in a way to prove that this is actually um, real, that it's not something I just make up here. So here let's say we have this vertical edge detector. It's a matrix that consists of a column containing ones, zeros and a minus one. And then let's say I have an image like that. This is my image where I have these zeros, half zeros and half ones. And my goal is to design a vertical edge detector that can detect that there is an edge here, a transition between dark and bright. Now when I apply my edge detector here to this image, that's what I'm doing here on the right hand side, I can see the output is this one here. So it has detected that there was a, an edge. So it detected essentially this edge here, the transition, the transition between dark and bright. So before convolutional networks, people were using these edge detectors yeah, to detect transitions in an image. So for instance here, this is the vertical edge detector applied to an image in the MNIST dataset. And you can see here, um, for instance, when we have the MNIST dataset. So I'm just, okay. So um, here we have then these detected edges. You can see, I mean, they are not perfectly horizontal, uh, vertical, because it's like a curve. It's maybe not an ideal image. I should have maybe taken the number one or something like that from MNIST. But you can see everywhere else, it's not detecting anything. And here, where there's something horizontal, also you can see these parts are missing. Of course, in an image like that, it's like a yeah, real world image, which is pretty rounded here in the shapes. It's not perfect, but you can see the bigger picture here that people would design like filters to get certain aspects from an image. Or for instance, here I have the same um, edge detector except that it is horizontal instead of vertical. So I have a row of ones, zeros and then minus ones. And here you can see now that it is yeah, detecting these, these horizontal edges here. Whereas then for some vertical ones here, so these, these regions are missing. So this is just like a bigger picture context um, of let's say traditional computer vision designing different filters. And of course, these are just very, very, very simple edge detectors. They're more sophisticated ones. But yeah, now going back to the CNN. So how is that related to the CNN? So in the beginning of this course, I talked about traditional methods and deep learning. And one major difference between deep learning and let's say traditional machine learning and other methods is that in deep learning, we have this automatic feature extraction. In that sense, you can also think of the CNN as an automatic feature extractor that can actually learn um, something like an edge detector. Of course, it will not learn exactly that edge detector. It will just learn the edge detector that is best for, let's say, maximizing um, prediction accuracy. Yeah, I already showed you this slide in the last video. This is again LXNet trained on ImageNet. And in the previous slides, I showed you these manual filters like vertical and horizontal edge detectors. And if you look here at figure three, where they plot the 96 convolutional kernels 
after the first layer, you can see it's actually quite similar. So it's also somehow learning like these diagonal ones, um, diagonal filters, horizontal filters, you know, vertical filters and so forth. But then there are also these filters like this one and this one, which are some checkerboard patterns. Some are only focused on colors. So you can see really the CNN is learning a kind of complex set of filters here um, that yeah, together can help it with maximizing prediction accuracy. So in that way, um, also typically the early layers learn yeah, very simple feature extractors and then the farther you go in the network, these basically assemble to more complex shapes in the feature maps. So the feature maps in the early layers, they usually detect something like edges and later in later layers usually they detect more complex objects. So there was um, actually an interesting paper yeah, looking um, at the feature activation maps and I also should say um, as a general method so if you want to look at what input pixel maximize the loss function um, so previously when we talked about partial derivatives of the loss we looked at the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to let's say the weight input and we used that to update the model right so update the weights so in that way we wanted to know um, how do I have to change my weight so to minimize the loss you can actually do the same thing by looking at the hidden layer activations or maybe even the inputs, right? So uh, let's say you can do that with the activation. You can see, okay, which activation basically has a high um, impact on the loss. So what are the gradients here basically? So in that way, you can also study the activations and even in the input, you can find in the input, if this is like the input pixels, you can find out which have the highest loss gradients or partial derivatives of the loss with respect to the input. And then you can find out which pixels is the loss most sensitive towards to. I will at the end of this video also show you or give you an article that highlights or explains some of these techniques. In any case, so in this paper here, they also backpropagated the activation signal. So they looked at what are the strong activations and backpropagated them back to the input images. And then they applied a so-called unpooling to map the activations back to the original input dimension. So in a sense, it sounds maybe a little bit yeah, convoluted, but in a sense, they were actually looking at what activations, what are the large activations in each feature map and how do they correspond to the input image. So, for instance, they had different layers. So in the first layer, there were mostly abstract features here. In the second layer, you could see there are, I would say, more complex shapes. Hard to tell what they are, but they're a little bit more complex. But then you can see in the third layer of the network, um, there are more like concrete things emerging, like a face suddenly, right? From these simple patterns, suddenly the combination of them um, emerge, uh, there emerges a face or that's maybe an eye and things like that. And um, these shapes become more and more complex the later, the, well, yeah, the deeper the network goes. So in that way, these feature maps are mainly face detectors. These are eye detectors. And here it's really hard to tell. But yeah, in that sense, the more or the deeper we go in the network, the more complex these shapes that the network can recognize become. So um, yeah, just um, another example here. It's from the same paper. So here, again, the first layer is mostly uh, colors and simple edges that it, get, it detects. And then here in the layer two, it has like these different more abstract shapes. On the right hand side, these are the original ob objects. You can see there's an eye here, it kind of detects that. Um, or here, layer three. For instance, if we focus here on the car, it can detect this wheel. It's kind of interesting that the network really learns here um, yeah, these important parts of an image while ignoring also the background. So of course it depends on what uh, the classification task here is. But if the classification task is, let's say, predict what object it is, let's say predict that this is a person, you can see it uh, focuses on the person, not on the background here. Or, or here, for instance, that's only mostly the person highlighted here, nothing really in the background. Yeah, here are some more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, so here's an article that has a nice summary figure of different approaches for interpreting what the network pays attention to in the input. So in the previous slides, I showed you essentially the feature map activations here. This is a set of methods for looking at what pixels in the input are most important for making a certain prediction, for instance. So you can ask maybe the question, if I have a, I don't know, a cats versus dogs classifier, what is the most important, important part in the image to classify a cat versus a dog. And you want to see that it pays maybe attention to the anatomy, like the legs or the shape of the animal rather than the background. So in that way, using these methods, it's actually a good sanity check to make sure the network yeah, pays attention to salient parts in that image. So yeah, I would say the most, um, the most traditional methods on the left-hand side have been used for a long while. And here are also some more recent ones. I would say actually GradCam is still among the most popular ones, but there are also yeah, some modern, more modern ones, which are, I think, are producing uh, better results. So looking at this one here, Vanilla Gradient Ascent, so you can also just think of it as descent it's maybe easier to think about so what that is um it's that what i mentioned in the um, beginning of this video where i mentioned instead of computing the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the input weight to one of the input weights we would compute it with respect to the input pixels in that image so that tells us really how important is a pixel for the loss if we have a network for classification so here now, if we look at this, we can see the network when it does a classification. I actually don't know what type of classification it is. I'm just assuming that. So you can see it kind of pays attention to the dog instead of the deck background, which is kind of good. You can see this one guided backpropagation. It's uh, a flavor of this vanilla, vanilla gradient descent, except that here there's a thresholding going on. But yeah, um, in any case, what you can see here, it highlights better that the network pays attention to the yeah, muzzle or even yeah, the whole head area of the dog. So maybe this is, a, I'm speculating, but maybe this is a network that is trained to yeah, predict or distinguish between different breeds of dogs. So for instance, being more specific than just saying dog, for instance, saying that this is a Doberman. So in that way, the network has to also maybe sp pay special attention to yeah, the head area because um, the general body that is something that looks very similar for different types of dogs or breeds of dogs so in that way maybe you have to really pay special attention to the head area here the muzzle and so forth yeah and um, there are other methods for instance the smooth grad method and the blur integrated gradients and yeah you can see they are all somewhat similar but they are all yeah good methods for essentially looking at what parts of the image the network pays attention to, which I would recommend in practice if you work on a bigger project and your project is on, let's say, classification. It might be a good idea to utilize one of these methods to really look at what your network pays most attention to, at least for I don't know, a handful of images and so forth. It can help sometimes to make sure the network does something that is actually sensible. All right, so yeah, in the next uh, video, then uh, let me talk about the code implementation, finally.